Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, I'm Dodge. Welcome to Big Mech's Workshop and Paint Studio. In today's video, we're painting a Pox Walker. Really loving the sculpt on these, and their rules for the game are pretty cool as well. Now it's been primed with Vallejo Black Primer, as always, and then we're going to be using Demonet Hide, watered down a lot to uh, do the skin to start off with. You need a couple of coats of this, you don't need to be particularly neat with it. But uh, I'd keep those coats really thin because we're going to put a lot of different layers on this, uh, colour wise, so you don't want to clog up any of those details. The next colour was Warp Fiend Grey, watered down even more and as you can see I'm just using a very small brush and we're just pulling that from the recessed areas to the top to highlight all the muscle textures, the guts and the warts and also the knuckles because uh, they're going to want to stand out a bit. You can basically edge highlight those knuckles with this colour. Um, uh, we'll come back to those again in a bit to re-highlight them. I didn't realise at the time that his head had a uh, sack on it, that's why I painted his uh, head purple by mistake. The next colour will be Slanesh Grey. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm using all these greys, but um, I could do this with other colours in green, and I probably will do one in a green or yellow or some other colours. But again, just leaving a bit of the last colour showing, really watering this down and uh, highlighting it. I suppose if you really wanted to, you could dry brush these colours in. Then for the last highlight before we do anything else with the skin, it's Celestria Grey by Games Workshop. And this is just pretty much an edge highlight picking out the sharpest points and details. As you can see, I'm not putting much paint on there. I tend to go over the knuckles and anything bumpy. Uh, definitely go over the tops of all the warts as well, because when we give them a wash, you want them to still stand out. Then we're going to give it a watered down wash with Juicy Violet, but I don't use water, so I'm using Lamiup Medium by Games Workshop. About 50 50 mix of this and uh, spreading that around because I want it to pull in all the recesses, but I don't really want it to um, filter too much over the top of all those highlights we've just done. This will just blend all that brushwork together. I think using this technique, you could probably batch paint most of your pox walkers like this but in our unit I think we're going to vary them up with different techniques. Next we're going to use Rhinox Hide on all the jumpsuit by Games Workshop and that's just going all over the jumpsuit that's about the only place we're going to put Rhinox Hide. It's a simple job just a couple of layers of a really watered down paint till you get a nice vibrant brown. Be careful where the uh, brown meets the flesh, so you don't you don't want to spill paint over there or go on any of the purple work you've just spent ages doing. Now you can see we've got a uh, nice brown base to work with. Now this is fire orange by Model Color. Um, I watered it down a hell of a lot here because um, there's a lot of recesses and a lot of other work to get into. Uh, may have gone a bit over the top with watering that down. Uh, took quite a few coats to bring that back up to a smooth colour. It's not a colour I use very often so I wasn't really sure about the consistency of that paint. So it took me like three layers but then we got a uh, nice even coat and it's, as you can see it's a, it's a luminous orange which I think is quite interesting. It won't be when we're finished. Now we're putting on a mix of about 60% uh, fiery orange and 40% Rakarth Flesh by Games Workshop because that's how I like to um, do my highlights for stuff like this because on fabric when light hits it what you end up getting uh, the colour sort of disperses and goes more pale rather than bright and because the colour's already bright we're just going to make the uh, highlights paler now we're switching those ratios around and we've got about 60% Rakarth Flesh or 40% of the Fire Orange and just re-highlighting and following down all those creases and lines Focusing mainly at the top ones and anything that's got a shadow or is hid underneath something, maybe just pick out the very sharpest edge of it. 
Then we're going to water down Reclam Flesh Shade by Games Workshop with some Lamiate Medium and you can see that's a really thin coat but what's that, what that's going to do is now blend all that work together that we've done act as a filter so if you've gone a bit too hard with a bit of paint and there's a bit of a hard line it'll just soften that up a bit again you want to be careful of keeping control of this because you don't want it pulling onto anything else that you've done as you can see that's um, looking pretty decent now and rather subtle but it was still too clean for what I wanted so we've gone ahead and used an Agrax third shade with Lamia Medium and we're going to make this look a lot dirtier now. It's one of the only instances where um, the clouding of the Agrax third shade will be beneficial so his jumpsuit looks all oily and dirty. You also want to be getting it into the recesses the most but um, as you'll see in a sec when it dries it comes out looking like a mechanic jumpsuit or something really dirty uh, what brown did I use for this? I know I used Gotho brown to highlight it Dryad bark was then used for the leather straps which is a pretty simple process, it's just all those leather straps and the boots as well were done in dryad bark then watering down Gothor Brown and working mainly at the top parts where the light's going to hit again we're not trying to brighten the colour up, we're just trying to flatten it to the top so it looks like the light's hitting I'm pulling the uh, paint one direction down the strap then pulling it back up the other way to uh, get rid of any hard lines that are on there Then we use Storm Storm something fur. Storm Vermin Fur. The two of those are very similar, I always get the names mixed up. Storm Vermin Fur was used to start painting the spikes, and this is a base coat for all the spikes and horns. So you could put this on a bit thicker than usual if you want to, or just carry on with a couple of thin coats. And then I went and used Steel Legion Drab for the sack because um, I like to use that for cloth and things like that. Works really well for robes and things as well on Dark Angels or Blood Angels or anything else. It's a really good colour for that. Obviously at this point I realised that he had a sack on his head and it wasn't all rotten flesh. And once we've done that, we're going to use Games Workshop Zandri Dust to start highlighting areas of that. Um, anything that's slightly raised. Just following basically your creases around everything else. All the other colours can sit in the recesses. I mean, the sculpting of these is great. It really lends to that sort of paint job. You don't really have to go over the top. Just following the lines around with the brush. Sort of an edge highlight if you would, but... Uh, not quite an edge highlight if that makes sense it definitely limits the amount of work you have to put into these now Dawnstone was then used to highlight all the horns you just want to be careful when you're getting closer to the flesh not to um, go over any of that but you want that highlight starting pretty close and obviously these horns have got little dips and stuff in there so try not to get paint into the dips and creases of them and once we have highlighted all of those, we're going to be using Agrax Sir Shade on all the leather parts over the Gotho Brown and Dryad Bark. I tend to do most of my leather this way. It gives a pretty rich leather look. Uh, sorry for it not being on camera as well as normal, but I've uh, been changing the camera settings, switching it to 1080p, and um, been having a bit of trouble keeping it in focus though. And clearly, quick guess, everyone knows what this is going to be, it's um, Games Workshop's lead belcher for the metallic parts. There's not much need to go into uh, much detail about this one. Pick out any metallic bits you want, I picked out the uh, knife, the what looks like steel toe caps on the boots, the pressure, pressure gauge thing on the back 
that hangs down from his uh, oxygen tank or whatever that is. And the tank itself was also painted in that colour. Then we're going to use Reclam Flesh Shade for a change and water that down. And put that into all the recesses where around the warts, where the flesh meets the horns and... I think that's about it. Anywhere where there's uh, clumps of warts, that's, so that includes the um, left hand as well. There's quite a few small warts on that. Obviously water that down a lot with laminate medium and if you need to, go over it twice and make sure you let it dry in between. Agrax Earth Shade was then used over the metallic parts, but I reckon you could have guessed that one anyway. Agrax is just one of the best washers Games Workshop has, you can use it for everything. I think I end up doing um, two coats of that on there because I really wanted to darken it down to go with the dirty Nurgle sort of look. Then we're going back in to highlight these using the Celestria Grey, but this time we're only highlighting the walls because we want to draw the eye to those. So you want to take the time because there's a lot of them and water your paint down a lot. I'm barely touching any of these but I'm leaving traces of paint behind. Don't need to go putting loads of paint on them because it will run or spoil the look. You're just highlighting the very tips of the warts now. Then we're going to go and mix Caraberg Crimson with Lamiate Medium consider quite considerably. You're looking more than 50% there. As you can see it's really watered down and we're going to go back over those areas from a, um, a bit further away from the warts than we did with the Reclam Flesh Shade and then pull it towards the warts. Start making that look a lot more subtle. And at this point it's starting to look pretty decent and is nearly finished. Now we're going to use Zandri Dust again because we put an Agrax Earth Shade wash on the um, well, yeah, on the uh, fabric and the cloth, which I think I've missed the footage for. So we've done that, and then we're going to go back over with a rack off uh, with a um, Zandri dust again to repick those highlights out. These were quite a lot of fun to paint, actually. There's so much character in them. Now we're going to re-highlight all the metallic parts that had an Agrax Earth Shade using lead belcher don't need to go over the top with this it's just a gentle highlight now the teeth were really hard to get into focus guys but it was a um, model color blue gray was used for the teeth um, using a Windsor Newton series 7 but I just could not get that to focus because the uh, part of the model so small. Then we're using an Agrax Earth Shade again, but this time when we put it into the mouth, as you can see it'll uh, colour in the whole thing, but we want it in the recesses of the teeth, so I'm then drying my brush on my hand and running the brush over the outer teeth so it pulls the uh, wash off. So they'll still have a filter on, a small one, but most of it will then sit in the recesses, uh, making those teeth stand out. And at this point, I think we're about done guys. So I hope you like uh, watching these videos, I hope they help. Um, hit comment, share with your friends, subscribe, hit comment. Leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one guys. Thanks for watching.